Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Pods of the Multiverse. We're an unofficial D&D podcast where four friends play d and I'm Andy, and I'm the DM for our adventures in the world of Theros. And welcome back to our 10th game. Let's go ahead and reintroduce the players for this game right now. I'm Jimmy. I play Gran, the Minotaur Barbarian, powered by friendship. I'm Scala. I play Andromedy, modeling this season's hottest MacGuffin, the Creation's Eye. My name is Jeffy. I play Clix, who has no use for exposition. <laughs> <laughs> and for the first time, we have on Pods of the Multiverse a guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, I'm May, and I play Aramoana, the fishiest mean girl. I wonder what that could mean. Hmm. Let's find out together. Without further ado, let's get into the episode. And now, a recap. A whole lot of shit happened last game. With Andromedy about to open the... Can we just leave it at that? A whole lot of shit happened. Let's go. A <laughs> whole lot of shit happened. Legitimately accurate. Andromedy opened the Pyxis of Pandemonium, and all that happened was they succumbed to some androphage and went unceremoniously berserk amid their empty bathhouse. Uh, meanwhile, Gron, with Califex at his side, leapt into battle. Side by side with the Eroan champion Aesirius and the remaining Ecroan Legion. All the while, on the other side of the Colophon, Clix stalked and found Lyukar in the lavish bedchamber of his private villa. The conversation, as he was disguised as his mother, quickly devolved into combat as Lyukar and Clix engaged. Seeing his martial prowess and otherworldly abilities face to face, Clix seemed to be overwhelmed, if not for his own tricks, and eventually was able to overtake and slay his father. As the blood washed away in Lyukar's own pool, Clix found Andromedy and delivered the jade for the crown before the two of them joined the battle themselves. On the battlefield, Gron saw Hargot atop the ruined Temple of Triumph, and together with Califex and their own infantry, stormed the Colosseum to confront him. Joining to meet the Horde head-on as they closed in around the much smaller Legion force, none other than Volkos and the Flame Speakers riding giant eagle anvil rots came to the party's aid. Behind them, Perforos himself coming down from the mountains as now a host of gods battled in the sky above Akros. Even then, though, the brutal, direwolf-riding Ragegore warband and their leader, the so-called Wolf King, nearly destroyed the entirety of the Flamespeakers. Gron, facing Hargot's merciless assault, meanwhile, held his own, but eventually Gron fell. Califex jumped to his aid with a lay on hands, only to be savagely attacked himself before Gron defended his companion from what probably was a killing blow. Probably. Gron used a newfound ability, the Blinding Smite, to help him overcome and destroy Hargot. Quickly delivering the ruby to Andromedy, the creation's eye fully activated, and with a display of divine dialogue and intervention... The shadow that had fueled the Horde was cast out from Akros, and the Akroans quickly won the day thereafter. <clears throat> Sorry. But not before receiving menacing final words from the Wolf King himself. After an evening of rest and contemplation, and the crowning of our heroes as official heroes and saviors of Akros, they make plans to move toward the seeming source of this darkness. The Krogma and Marukios the Undying, deep within Death Bellow Canyon. So, it is the morning after this enormous battle. The three of you are waking, I imagine, either in the Citadel or perhaps even in Califex's modest but comfortable villa in the Colophon. Didn't Clix just inherit a manor of some kind? Well, <laughs> well, actually. It's kind he of a murder he, scene he right now. He doesn't know, yeah. He doesn't, yeah, you guys have no idea what's going on with that scene. I um, mean, it, it has not come up since, uh, but if you want to investigate... I don't think that's where you would have slept, but if you want to investigate further, you certainly can. I'm not going to be like, yo, guys, I got this place we could chill. There's a corpse <laughs> in it, but let's go. To... Did we long rest, technically? Yes. You're waking up after a long rest. You all wake up to the smell of burning bodies. What do you all do? What's the? It smells like breakfast. Anybody else smell that? Oh, Gron, really? There's a time and a place for that. For what? Joking aside, we should go see what's going on. 
So there's no breakfast? Oh, I'm sure there is somewhere, but I don't think that smell is breakfast. Well, I guess we better find the source of this. Gron follows his nose. Gron, you walk out into the open colophon where you see Volkos and a number of the other survivors of this battle burning bodies of the deceased in a large funeral pyre. Oh. Well, did anyone else come with me? Quick follows Gron. Volkos turns around, seeing you all arrive. You're just in time. I was about to say a few words, but Andromedy is the oracle that rallied us all together if you had any thoughts. My thoughts are not of use to provide comfort to the living, I do not think. What Clothus teaches us of death is that we all have a time when our thread will be cut, and we must accept it when it comes. As I said, it is not a comforting thought. You know, you're probably right. And with a small wink and a nod, he turns back around and continues casting these large, produce flames and create bonfires and various fire spells to keep this pyre burning. Volkos. Hey. I present my maul uh, for Volkos and say, this weapon has served me well, but I found that I no longer have a use for it, and I think that instead of leaving it somewhere to gather dust, such a mighty artifact of the god of the forge deserves a send-off, don't you think? Oh, Gron. Wondrous. Thoughtful Gron. I think this is a wonderful idea. He bows reverently towards you and this maul, takes it from you, holds it high in the air in front of this pyre, and he says, Lord God of the Forge, this morning we pay homage to those who have fallen in this great defense of Akros and these lands. We remember not only their spirits as they pass on into the underworld, but we know in faith that their bodies return to the earth to the great forge be used again. And in so doing, we offer up all of their talents, all of their deeds, all of their devices, and all of their great weapons in eternal service to you and all of the gods of Nyx. And he throws the maul into the center of the pyre. The pyre itself erupts with a flash of bright red flame. And you watch the mall melts, covering the top of this pyre in liquid bronze. Thank you. You are most welcome, Brown. Turning to Andromedy, he says, After the fire burns out, there is to be a council of oracles and of, well, figures much more political than you or I to decide where to go from here. I believe I know. Another vision from Glovis. There is a dark place within Deathfellow Canyon. That is where our adversary can be found. Very well. As the three of you watch this pyre in the middle of the colophon, is there anything else you want to do before attending this meeting? Nothing from clicks. Not even a little passing investigation of the crime scene? We could help you make it look like an accident. I don't think clicks <laughs> gives a fuck about that. <laughs> does, does not care. Uh, no, actually, yeah, no. Okay, so after watching Volkos and the remaining flame speakers. You follow them towards the top of the citadel, where you can see a familiar scene of Polymede, Tyrannica, her counselors, and a few other figures. Arissa, the ward of Aesirius, Verinis, the war priest, as well as a handful of other Acroan hoplites. It looks like you were able to find some rest. Rest well earned, friends. Come, we have a lot to discuss. And she... She brings you and the other oracles and the other attendees into the meeting hall where you first spoke with Tyronica and the others when you had arrived at the colophon. Tyronica now speaks, I do not intend to undermine the great victory that was seen here against this shadow-driven horde, but we all saw that great shadow rise out of the fallen. We all saw the gods in the sky in the words of Erois, of Clothis, of Mogus, and of that vicious wolf king. Looking towards Andromedy, still adorned with the crown, she says, Tell us, Oracle of Destiny, 
Tell us what your God has shared with you about this end we all face. I take out the map that I found yesterday, I roll it out on the table, put some things in the corners to weigh it down. You know, those little chess pieces that they have. Sure, of course. The little uh, war table figurines. <laughs> yeah. And I just point to the spot I marked. That is where the source of this shadow can be found. I do not know if you have heard word yet from whatever calls for help have been sent. But if we allow this to fester for much longer, we may experience more consequences. More! Arissa interrupts you. More? How, how can you possibly... We lost countless of the past weeks, let alone yesterday. I think it would be wise of you to trust in Andromeda. It wasn't very long ago I was spared a coward's death at their hand. And now I've been across countless deserts, only to end up in this polis, sparing even further countless deaths from happening. And you sit here with such a lack of gratitude. How dare you? I've put my life in Andromeda's hands countless times, and here I am. I would implore you to do the same. Make no mistake, Leonin. We are grateful for your entire party's efforts. You have a very interesting way of displaying gratitude. But that does not mean that in the place of our fallen Eroan champion, we will send countless more to die at a threat we cannot beat. Not with 10,000 men could you do this. <laughs> Not with 10,000 men. No. Um, but this is this is literally <laughs> that. This is we cannot storm the Black Gate alone. See, we just call this podcast Lord of the Rings. Shut yeah, the fuck up. Uh, uh, okay, I'm uh, sorry. Back on track. Who says we can't beat them? The entire room comes to a hush. At Gron's words. Gron, was it not you who said you never go to Death Bellow Canyon? <sighs> Gron looks down at his newly won great axe. There's a lot of things I said I would never do. Polymede looks up with a flash of lightning in her eye. Perhaps against such a force, it cannot be won with strength alone. But perhaps, as Andromedy has said, with this tremendous relic, a weapon of a god... There is hope. Arissa, I agree that while I think it not wise to send countless more to their deaths, I think we can help defend these heroes as they seek that place where the source of this titan's blood, this wrathful dark power, lay and drive it back into the prison it came from. I take it you have something in mind? Ever since Queen Saimede disappeared, Keranos' visions have been odd, strained. They come and go, but I have come to accept that the Storm God's ways are as the lightning itself. But last night, as I look out over the Colophon and Akros, I saw something that I believe, Andromeda, you had told me once that you saw in a vision. This terrible, dark maw. I would think if we threw the entire force of Akros at it, we would all be lost. But perhaps... Perhaps if we can defend, if we can hold that place long enough, perhaps it will give you a chance. My life has ever been in the hands of fate. I will do what I must, and whatever you can spare to aid me in that task, I accept graciously. Polymede takes your arm in her hand and says, You are not alone in this. We are not alone in If there are to be more of these dark forces, this horde, if they are to return again and again until this is ended, you cannot send the whole of the remaining legion out and expect Akros to still stand. Someone must defend it. Tyrannica then says to this, And I think it is decided. Polymede and a small infantry of hoplites will aid this triad of fate, while Arissa, Veronese, and the remaining legion will stay here to guard Akros. Make whatever preparations you need. We will offer what we can. I bow in gratitude and... I roll up my map and go get my stuff, I guess, for traveling. Andromeda, as you take your map and turn to leave, you see Volkos and the few other flame speakers, all the while present in this conversation, however silent. Seeing you approach and pass them by, he says, I think it's best we'll return to our mountain. Andromeda nods. I agree. You have already given much. Thank you. And I go in for a hug. 
He hugs back. There will always be a place for you at the monastery. You know that. I am grateful for your offer. Should fate ever return me there, I shall be happy to know that it awaits me. Click stole food in like game three, and I feel like it would be just amazing if I took it out of my. <laughs> oh my <cloak>. god, <laughs> that's gonna... rotten by now. Oh my god, <laughs> you are so stupid. <laughs> Here's a moldy lamb shank. Um, yeah. <clears throat> just kind of wrapping this up before you all leave. Is there anything that the three of you would like to do before gathering your forces and leaving for Death Bell Canyon? Who was that speaking that offered us anything they could? That was Tyrannica. That was the regent. Okay. I mean, you could always ask Califex, too. Califex? What would he know? He's like a prince around here, isn't he? Kind of. Like landed gentry. Exactly. That is literally the equivalent. An orphan of a lord. Speaking of Califex, after this whole discussion, he would turn to you and say, Don't think for a second I'm not going with you, brother. We're in this together. As we are in everything. But are you sure you really want to put yourself in that sort of danger? That sort of danger? Kron, look at us. Look at what has happened. I look around (laughs) (laughs) and kind of take in the wrecked surroundings and the smell of the burning bodies. Now look back at me, Gron. I'm coming with you. Well, all right. I knew I wouldn't be able to talk you out of that. I knew I wouldn't need to convince you. But I'm glad the matter's settled. So, you remember the stories about Death Bellow Canyon, don't you? Let's see if he would. <coughs> yeah, he does, on a 19. Oh, yes. Monstrous. Rage gore. In a tall with their twisted, gnarled horns. Just look at the wolf riders that we faced. Undoubtedly, there will be more of them. The twisting, dark canyon walls that seem to shift and change as you pass through them. Right. (laughs) If we're to go into this, I feel a bit exposed, and I gesture to the form of my massive minotaur muscles. Your beef. You point to your beef. Yeah, my my beef is visible through the tattered clothing. Visible beef. It's gotten more and more tattered, Mm -hmm. revealing more and more of my muscles as the adventure has gone on. Uh Uh-huh. So I'm going to need, you know, an endgame outfit. Reasonable beef coverings. Not reasonable. No, I want it to be... Excessive beef coverings. Yeah, well, I still want the beef to be visible in more of a intimidating, but perhaps protective way. Protective, intimidating beef coverings. <laughs> so how I'm going to do this is the three of you basically get an ask. And this will be using persuasion, but Gron, you will get advantage from Califex for this. So Gron, go ahead and make that roll. 21. Hell yeah. On a 21, you and Califex return to Tyrannica, and... I'm going to follow as well, actually. Okay. Clicks, you follow behind. The two of you go ahead and give me perception checks as you approach. 16. 13. Gron, you overhear just a little bit of of the tail end of a conversation where she's talking to her two counselors about a missing third counselor. No one's been able to find the counselor Leonin since last night. But you approach, and you and Califex ask about trying to procure a cloak of protection. She turns to her counselors, and they go away for a moment and then return with a beautiful red cloak, and you get your cloak of protection. All right. That'll do very nicely. Thank you. May it serve you well. I'd like to make a request to Tyrannica as well. There's a window in the room we're in. Yeah, there would actually be the same window that you That's saw live. what I from. fucking thought. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. A clicks points out of that window and points to Lyukar's dwellings and just says, This house over here, across the way in the Caliphon, I think... The remaining help there may be out of work in due time. And I would humbly request oh my God. that you give them this. And I pull out the 200 gold worth of gems and ask that it be distributed among the remaining Oh, help. man. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that is quite the request. I we am were, charitable by nature. <laughs> we will certainly fulfill this wish and also look into the matter in which you speak. But... Clicks, go ahead and give me a deception check. Fuck yeah. All right. 25. 
<laughs> they say nothing more. Yeah, no, no they do not. <laughs> However, in your mind as you do this, you hear a familiar voice, one that was noticeably absent throughout the course of the previous day, but returning now saying, No, no, clicks. do you really mean to cast off everything I have given you? Clix is going to pull out the ornate centurion's helm that he stole. Pull it out and present it to... Present it to Ranica. Yep. And say, and please give this to whichever soldier may be in need who has lost gear. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, amazing. Um, You're welcome. Fantastic. <laughs> Her counselors take this and look extremely grateful at this gesture. Go ahead and roll another deception check. It's another 25. Insane. You would dare. Just to spite me. Most interesting. See, I was going to start taking piety away from clicks. Fuck. I, that was kind of my goal, but uh, yeah, like... <laughs> but just the absolute blatant fuckery that you are doing. I was about to say goodbye to my disguised self-charges in a minute. No, 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 no. We are going to ride this roller coaster just a little longer. Okay, cool. Try to cast me out, clicks, but I am not done with you yet. You gain five piety with Phoenix. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Did you get anything fun? Yeah, advantage on deception text, yep. Doesn't seem like you need that. I don't, but I'll take it. Cool. Andromedy, is there anything... Yeah, I'll talk to Volkos a little before we leave, and I will say, So, I was reading this very interesting scroll uh, that uh, we found in the library. Nerd. Yes, absolutely. I'm a nerd, and I have, through my study, discovered a method similar to creating anvil rot, but I lack the necessary components. The construct requires something of a, a heart, and it needs to be a gemstone of, of some quality. Don't know if perhaps you might be able to furnish me with such a heart. I shall let you have the scroll in exchange. Oh, I see. Well, if this came from the library in the volcano, then it most definitely deserves to be burned at some point. But I will cherish it until that happens. But... <sighs> Andromedy seethes a little bit. This request. He kind of ponders, scratching his long beard. Go ahead and make your persuasion check. And you can also have advantage on this. 21. From his robes, Volkos pulls out a sort of ordinary volcanic rock. And placing it in his hand, and then placing it in yours, he says, I think I have one more trick up my sleeves. He gestures in the air, conjuring a bit of fire, and ignites the stone as it sits in your hand. The fire itself appears to be not hot at all, but when the brilliant flame subsides, you now have your hundred gold gemstone. Lovely. Thank you, Sophistes. What spell is this? This is for the homunculus servant. Yeah. Artificer I'm gonna make a ability, little, yeah. I'm going to make a little anvil rot moth. Very cool. Yeah, very, very cool. If you want to do that now, I'll say that we can just kind of fold this all into this morning activity before we move on here. And I guess while we're doing magic item things, inventory management, can I roll for the minor property on the crown? Yes, you can. So your piety score being what it is right now... Uh, in addition to all of the things that are yet to be revealed about this wondrous creation's eye, it also comes with a couple of random minor properties, one of which you can roll right now. That is a 28. Oh, how fucking fitting. While attuned to this item, you cannot be charmed or frightened. Okay, very cool. So do you want to go ahead and forge that before you guys leave? I'll take whatever time it takes to create this homunculus. Awesome. So Andromedy, uh, you retire to your quarters and begin casting the ritual to form this homunculus. What does it end up looking like? It is a sort of anvil wrought 
type moth. It is, you know, its central body is metallic. It's got those compound eyes, but they're crackling with a little bit of magmatic flame. And the wings are this intricate lattice of wire that also have this red, fiery glow to it. Awesome. And so, after all of the preparations are complete, the requests being made, the homunculus being made, the three of you, alongside Califex and Polymede, make to depart Akros toward Death Bellow Canyon. Your exit from the ruined polis is with some small measure of pomp, though, as you can see many of the surviving hoplites and other injured folks who were perhaps healed by Volkos and Andromedy the night before all bid you a very warm and heroic departure. Departing Akros, you leave across the still fairly ruined but now cleared Faragax Bridge, and... And the midday sun set off into the southern Phoboros wastelands. How would the three of you like to helm this travel? You've been here before, right? Looking to Gron. And Califax, actually. Yeah. I looked to Califax. You remember the way? Oh, I certainly do. The DM's got to do our survival checks now. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't suppose this map would be of any use to you, but if it is, you may have it. Oh, uh, oh, thank you, Andromeda. Yeah, I didn't think so. There, there's more out there than what's on that map. I should take notes, then. Of course you should. Have a more accurate record. So, with Califex and Gron leading, I'm going to say you can go ahead and roll with advantage as you begin to lead your small company towards Death Bellow Canyon. You can take a d4 on this as well. Thank you. And I feel like Gron and Califex have done this a lot. So Califex sometimes runs up ahead mm -hmm. doing scout stuff. For sure. And they have sort of a communication system mm. by which Califex would communicate back what's going on way up ahead. Of course. That's a shitty roll. Uh-oh. <laughs> Emboldened by our recent exploits, we immediately fucking <laughs> biff. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, it, it can't be that bad, but it's, it's a 13. Okay. Even though... It is a mostly clear day. You get out and are traveling for a few hours and are able to find your course easy enough across the rolling desert wastelands. There is a moment, however, in the afternoon where a shadow sweeps across your entire vicinity. However, there are no clouds in the sky. Everyone go ahead and roll me a perception check. 10. 12. 19. Okay. Oh, I should roll for Califex. <laughs> Fucking two. God damn it. <laughs> Laggard. You all look around. Oh, hold on. There are other people in this party. I'm going to do Polymede too, and she has pretty high mark for this. Okay. Still not great. Everyone looks about and clicks. You notice trailing behind this shadow, there is a cloud of black mist, similar to ones that you have seen before coming up from beneath the Faragax, or even, similarly, from out beyond in the Ashlands. And you know that this is most certainly dangerous. You should try and do something before it gets here. Shadows ahead. We should find somewhere to go off the path. I'm also going to put my Shroud of Nyx on. You don your Shroud of Nyx, and Califex speaks up. You heard him. We need to look for cover. Everybody go ahead and give me a investigation check. Four. Fourteen. Twenty-six. My combat rolls are going to be dog shit. <laughs> it's all these <laughs> fucking random ones that are good. Clicks, you managed to find a large outcropping of rocks fairly close by. It is a little bit of a hike through the sand to get towards them, but on that roll, you are able to beat this approaching flay wind as it quickly passes through this area. And so... Everyone is going to get advantage on this roll. I need a intelligence saving throw. As this supernatural shadow-wreathed windstorm passes by you. Feeling pretty dumb. I got a 10. With advantage? Yeah. 
The other one was a nine, so it was a good thing I got that advantage. Uh, 22. 17. Okay. Wow. Gron and Andromedy both pass this, and so with the help of finding cover, you only take <coughs> six necrotic damage. Clicks, you take 12. That's awesome. Having failed the save, Clicks, you also have your maximum hit points reduced by that amount. Good thing you noticed it. Happy to help, Click says, looking battered after getting smashed around by that dark wind. Clicks, you did you did such a good job helping your friends find cover that you yourself took the brunt of this. And this is why Clicks assault. didn't want to make any friends. <laughs> such a selfless this is individual. Why. This is why you don't make this friends. This is why. This is why you don't make friends, everybody. The storm eventually passes, and you are able to continue. Let's go ahead and have another survival check with advantage from Gron. Take a d4. That's better. 22. On a 22, this leg of your travel is easy. You are able to find various paths through the wastelands, perhaps left over from the horde that moved out of Death Bellow Canyon to assault Akros all those weeks ago. Picking up on this trail, you make very good pace. I'm only going to have one more before the evening begins to settle in. One more now. Take a d4. Um, 16. That will still pass. And while not as fast, this leg of your travel, with your whole company of hoplites and everyone together, you are able to press on towards Death Bellow Canyon. And indeed, it begins to loom on the horizon. You see jagged canyons cut straight down into the wastelands and a unnatural shadow, one that you had seen as you traveled from the Ashlands back towards Akros, looming over this entire area. Polymed turns to the three of you and says... It seems we are blessed with expert survivalists. We've been doing this a while. The gods certainly do favor us. Let us hope, pray, that they continue to do so. Because that, she points towards the ominous, shadowed landscape. It doesn't take an oracle to tell you that that does not bode a good omen. Well, it's not getting any less scary. (laughs) Let's go. Great. It is getting dark at this point. Just to point that out there. To Gron, I'll say, does it get worse at nightfall? I've never actually been here. I've only heard the stories. I can't imagine it could get worse at all. Somehow I think we should probably wait till morning. I'm in agreement with Gron. I think just for the fact that we would need light sources, and that would make our approach obvious. Califex would speak up. Perhaps, though, it would be equally favorable if we had the cover of darkness. This one has the right idea. We don't know what's still down there. We don't know if any more would come out while we rest and take advantage of our camp. I think we should press on, but that is only my opinion. Well, you've never steered me wrong before. Is that another cow joke? (laughs) Oh my god! Oh my god, Jimmy with the secret cow jokes. Fuck. The, the, they're not on purpose. They're only jokes after Scala points. Them. Oh my god. I haven't even heard any of the others, and I'm already... Fucking 200 <laughs> IQ over here. That's right. Leave, I mean, leave it to an oracle. <laughs> Alright, let's move. Fuck right off. <laughs> Alright, does the seer have any more steer jokes? God damn it. As Gron says this, Polymed casts a flickering blue dancing light around her. I can touch the axe and cast light on it. Very cool. Do you do that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you were like, I can. I can, but I choose not to. Just want to make things difficult. Uh, For what it's worth, Gron can also touch anything and light it on fire, as long as it's not being held by someone else. From what ability? What is that? That's my that's my sixth level subclass. Storm Barbarian. Oh, fuck. That's right. What are you going to light that's not being held? You're just going to light the earth? It could be something I'm holding. Yeah. Oh, okay. You cast your various light sources and descend into one of these large and ominous canyon... What do you call it? Canyon... Canyons. 
Ravine. Canyon Ravines. Crevasses? Crevasse. Chasm. Chasm, there you go. You're welcome. This ominous chasm. Everybody go ahead and roll me a perception check. 12. 18. 23. Andromedy and Gron, you quickly begin to notice that the shadow around this entire landscape is not only in the sky and in the air, but it clings to the canyon walls and the ground around you like a black smoke swirling and creeping at every corner. Andromedy, your crown begins to ping faintly at all of this. Mm, There are foul creatures nearby. Does it tell me what variety of foul creature? Go ahead and give me a investigation or arcana check with advantage. That is going to be a 23 arcana. Arcane AF. You can definitely tell that the source of these shadows are from undead. And especially at the walls and at the ground all around, you feel like it's almost sentient in the way it moves. And it's all going this thick gas in the same directions as if indicating it is all coming from one source. This foul air is the work of the returned, and from what I can tell, they are that way. So I just want to clarify this a little bit. If you're going to try and traverse this without directly dealing with this shadow that clings to everything as you pass through it, it will definitely serve as like an immediate obstacle and or detriment. Is there something that can be done? On your roll, I would say that... You assume that a magical light source like daylight, something stronger, uh, Mm. would have a great effect against this. Okay, then I'll take out the drift globe and I'll cast daylight from that. Okay, great. You do this. What is the radius of that spell? 60 feet. You encompass your entire company, the hoplites, your party, Polymede and Califax, in this brilliant daylight from the drift globe. And all of the shadows, almost like reacting to an allergen, quickly move away from this light source and allow you at least a bubble of safety as you travel through this ravine. I'll say the advantage coming from Andromedy this time. Gron, go ahead and roll another survival check. And you can take a d4. 26. Awesome. You make your way through this ravine with... Gron and Andromedy guiding the way. You come to places where smaller canyons branch off and fork out from this one that you are traveling in, but you are able to find your way with that amazing role and with the fact that Andromedy astutely deciphered what's going on here as far as all of this coming indeed from the same foul origin. Gron, on that role, I'm going to say that so far... You are able to steer past any errant howls and screams and other noises that lurk in this canyon network. On that roll, I'm also going to tell you that the canyon walls, as you descend, are getting extremely high, so much so that you can scarcely see where the tops of the walls meet the rest of the landscape beyond. So it's this strange trick of the eye because of all these shadows and different things where you can see the walls around you and then your vision gets lost as you look up until you're looking straight up when you can see the vague sky high above you. Trippy. (laughs) And it is at this time that I'm going to need everyone to go ahead and make me another perception check. 22. Uh, 11. Nat 1. Clix is out to lunch right now. <laughs> he's, he's looking up at, at the Nixian sky and like totally, totally not with it. Clix and Andromedy, perhaps distracted by other things. Gron, you steer this company to a large fork in this ravine. You're coming from the south. It goes off forking to the north and forking to the east. And on that roll... You can tell that these shadows are coming from the eastern path. However, at the same time, 
you see that at the edges of this daylight radius, the shadows are growing much darker, as if trying to work their way in towards you, but being unable to do so because of the strong daylight. I don't like the look of this, Gron. Me neither. Let's move quickly. You go to move your party, and the daylight begins to fade. And all at once, these shadows swirl into figures, take form, almost looking themselves like wolves, minotaurs, and other creatures. I'm going to need everyone to roll initiative. Here it is. 24. Modest 11. 14. May, go ahead and roll also. 20. Dirty. You can hear this foul hissing and screaming from these shadows as they begin to surround your party. Clicks, you are up first. Mm. You can see that there are approximately six figures that have formed surrounding you. I don't like going first. That's <laughs> shit. I don't like it at all. That's what happens when your dex is like a <laughs> Fucking puzzle. terrible. Five. I need you all to engage first so I can get that sneak attack situation going. There is nowhere to hide. We are fucking surrounded and in a ball of glowing light, right? That is that is fading, yes. It is um, fading. Okay. Yeah. Alright, well we're gonna just we're gonna fucking do it live. I'm just gonna attack the nearest one. The one nearest Gron cool. in the anticipation that Gron does what Gron do. 21. When you say Gron do a Gron do, are you referring to singeing you every, every time fucking time? <laughs> if Clix takes no damage, he takes three damage because Gron burns his ass <laughs> entering his rage. Yeah. That will absolutely hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Cool. Nine damage. We're going to go ahead and fate weaver needle this little shit. Oh my god, it's an 18. It's an 18, one away from a Fate Weaver crit, uh, which is a 22 total. It's, yeah, I know it is. It, all right. Three damage. Cool. A clicks as you slash into this shadowy figure. The damage from your sword it doesn't seem to have the same cutting power, the same impact as the one from your magic dagger. And up next is Gron and Califex. Oh, Califex is here too. Okay, I got this. I'm going to position myself so that I am within 10 feet of all of them. Is that possible? Hard to do. They are kind of surrounding you and like the hoplites that are with you. So I can say, go ahead and roll. Go ahead and roll me an athletics check. And I'll tell you how many you can get. All right. 17. Okay, I'm going to say you can get three of them. Okay. All right, so I'm going to enter my rage, and all three of them take three fire damage immediately. Are those three near clicks? I'm going to say clicks is on the other side. So clicks is kind of on the outside of the one of the outer ones of, of the three of them. So if it's like a circle, clicks is just outside. Did I burn any friends? With that roll, I'm going to say no. Nice. So I'm going to attack with not my maul. I'm going to attack with my new axe. Go for it. Recklessly against... One of the ones near me. A uh, minotaur-looking one, if possible. Ooh, okay, give me a quick perception check. It's a nat 20. <laughs> Very Ron, minotaur -y. you look about, you cast this rage, your eyes light up, your, your burning sand floating around you. You look directly at this shade, this shadow, this wraith of a minotaur. And you see the figure of the... Wolf King himself staring back at you from this shadow. W -w 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 Wolf King! <laughs> no, it's not gonna be scooby doo Zoinks! Shag. Zoinks! Also, no. there was a fucking nat 20 in the barrel, and you made me waste it on a yeah, free perception. Yeah, it's like you couldn't, have, you couldn't right. have used that on the D12 weapon hey man. attack. Hey, man. Hey, <laughs> man. That's just D&D. &D. All right. Go ahead and make your go. rolls. I'm gonna hit that Wolf King looking guy. That's two 17s weird. It's 25 total. That'll hit. I'm gonna roll this d12 for the first time. It's actually a 26 because it's a plus one. Still hits. Yeah, nah, 26 that's, we gotta cut it there. It doesn't hit anyone. I rolled a one on the d12. <laughs> so that's still 12 slashing damage. Nice. Gron's still getting used to the, the new axe. It's not, you know. That was previously not possible. 
to roll a one. Anyway, two necrotic damage, and I have another attack. You notice, as powerful as a strike as that is, impactful as it is, the necrotic aura that sweeps through the cutting edge of this blade seems to have no effect. Coming. Got it. Uh, I'm going to hit him again. That's a 27 to hit. Absolutely hits. That's a 2 on the d12. It's like, next one's going to probably be a 3. <laughs> We're getting there. Yeah, so that's 13 slashing damage. You can see the form of this wraith getting torn apart at your assault. All the while, you hear in your mind this laughing. <laughs> I told you, we are inevitable. And we got a Califex, who is going to also attack the one you are engaged with. And so he gets some sneak attack action here. Rub it into Clix's face. Seriously. That is going to hit. And his spear. He does not have a magic weapon. He should have asked for one when we were at Acros. Eh, he didn't want to steal the show. But he is going to dump a smite into this hit. Little multi classed rogue paladin boy. Ooh, baby. Everyone in the vicinity sees when he attacks with his divine smite, the radiant damage has a tremendous effect against these raids. And, Gron, you see, after your initial blows, Califex finish the job on this one, and its form disperses and shatters into a cloud of smoke. Yeah. <laughs> one down. I high-five him as a free action. He high-fives you back as a free action, and it looks fucking cool. Nice. That's Andromedy. Okay. Andromedy will send their new metal moth over to touch one of these shadowy creatures. Ooh, ooh. Does a 14 hit? 14 will still hit. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so that's going to be 10 lightning damage and 7 force damage. Great. This shock and grasp. The electricity itself seeming to just kind of phase through these wraiths, but the force damage having an impact. Anything else from Andromeda? I'm not going to do anything else. Great. Polly meets up next. Nice and simple. She's going to zap two of them. The three of you see Polymede even having this sort of lightning resistance to these wraiths. She's able to drive through and with her sorcery finish the other two injured wraiths. And so currently at the bottom of the initiative, three remain. However, not for long as the hoplites move to engage. They begin attacking and... And while landing some blows with their spears and shields against the remaining shades, you can see their non-magical weapons not having as much of an impact. As we go to the remaining raids' turns, on their turn, you see uh, Andromedy, one is going to attempt to reach out one of its shadowy arms and life drain you. 19 on the die plus 4. Yep. That is going to be 10 necrotic damage, and I need you to make a constitution save. 14? That passes, so your health is not reduced by that amount. Swell. You can tell that this draining effect trying to take place, you are able to shake it off. Uh, this is against Gron. That is going to be a 16, which now misses. Does miss. And against Califex... That is going to be a 19, which will hit him. Holy shit. <laughs> okay. Uh, that, that's a way bigger roll. You see Califex taking 22 necrotic damage. Oh, okay. No! And failing his con <laughs> oh, as this large, shadowy, direwolf-shaped wraith engulfs him in his maw, and you can see the life essence of Califex being drained. Gron, it's all right. I'm going to use my reaction to attack that dire wolf. Go for it. 19. That'll hit. That's 15 slashing damage. Hell yeah. That's the three remaining ones. Top of initiative. 
Clix, that is back to you. Other K. There are three here, Mm -hmm. but you can see more beginning to form around your party. Okay, I'm going to go for the one engaged with Gron. First roll is a 16, which I assume hits. Uh, Second one is a 17. Okay. That is 22 damage. Now we'll do offhand. 19 to hit. Great. Yeah, hits. Five. Very cool. Clicks, you slash into this wraith as it battles with Gron. Right after your initiative, however, there is a bit of a lair action that takes place where I'm going to need somebody to roll me 3d4, please. Gotcha. Uh, 11. Uh, wow. Yeah, where the fuck is that during combat, right? Yikes. Big yikes. 11 more wraiths form around the party. That's great. Oh, wait, are you fucking serious? Wait, you said 11 more wraiths. I thought you were saying 11 equals more wraiths. You're saying no. there are 11 more raids. There are 11 more. Perfect. Perfect. I was just getting started. There are 14 now. That was just the lair action. Suddenly, as those form swirling around you, you hear the sound of drums, like rhythmic thunder, and appearing from the northern ravine, cutting through the shades as they apparate. As brutally efficient as they are menacing, a martial infantry of bronze-armored minotaurs. And leading them, you see May. Will you please introduce your character? (laughs) So, Aramorana is a triton, and she has what was once a blood-red skin that has been bleached by the sun. On her back, she carries a great axe and a mace which is adorned with the horns of her fallen minotaur foes from her previous battle encounters. The horns on said mace glow with a faint violet light, and as she marches, her fins on the back of her arms have a slight red flame glow to them. Pretty badass. Look of steel. The three of you see this triton of all figures leading these minotaurs, Aramoana, it is your turn. How far am I from the party? You are probably about 20 feet from the party itself, and you are very close to any number of these shades as you want to be. I approach the closest shade and cast Flame Blade. What does that look like? As she approaches the shade, she reaches her hand out, and a short sword materializes in her hand and casts a red light around her. And as she raises the sword, she gets a 18. Hell yeah. Without the, the added bonus. And raises her sword and slowly slashes through the closest wraith. Hell yeah. Go ahead and roll that damage. Uh, let me just pull up Jeffy's insane. Should be 3d6, I think? I think it oh, is yeah, 3d6, You can either yeah. pull up the sheet or look at Scala. <laughs> <laughs> this is D&D Beyond it exists in his brain. Listen, it's never been easier with D&D Beyond. Or Scala in your party. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Ten. You cut into this wraith with your flame blade. Is there anything, perhaps, that you cry out to your infantry as they begin this assault with you leading them? Um, you guys, take no prisoners. I want you to destroy them all. (laughs) That's amazing. Um, yes. That's absolutely amazing. Everything, everything this campaign needed. That's absolutely amazing. She has a look of steel on her as she says these words. But that's absolutely brilliant. Um, <laughs> so good. And so good. You guys. <laughs> you do all this as you look upon this party of Acroans uh, with their own minotaur, a leonin, and several humans battling out, and your bronze bones begin their attack. You see, acting on the same initiative as you, your minotaur equivalent of a hoplite that you have brought to this fight, attacking. However, all of their axes and scimitars and other various bladed weapons are all for the most part, 
also on fire. And so these are going to have a bit more of an impact than the Crow and Hoplite's regular attacks. And of the 14 total that were here, now just 11 remain. Dope. As so we go back to Gran. Gran, you see this tremendous force, these minotaurs, not like the warbands in the wastelands, armored, martial, coming to your aid. How do you respond? Who are these guys? I don't know. Looks like they're here to help. I honestly have no idea, but they're not covered in shadows, so perhaps they are friends. Their leader did say take no prisoners. Well, seems like they're on our side for now. Make sure you don't burn them, huh? <coughs> Click says, staring at Gron. I can't promise that. You know I can't promise that. Gron is going to... How many could I possibly burn if I were to position myself near as many of them as I could? Go ahead and make another athletics check. 22. Awesome. I'm going to say you can get like half of them. You can get five. Nice. Mm. Yeah, okay. I'm going to re-up my rage and just lightly singe five of these guys. Hell yeah. Aaron Moana, you see a minotaur among these Akroans with an aura of rage unlike a lot of the rages that you have seen where you come from. This one almost has a visible aura of red, and the sand around this guy is glowing red hot with some heat, fiery heat to it. Awesome. So you do that. What else do you do? Do I have advantage from Califex being near me? Yep. All right. So I'm going to attack not recklessly. I'm going to hit one with the axe. Go for it. That is a 20. That hits. That's another two. <laughs> Five. Uh, also. So that's going to be 10 slashing damage. Okay. And an additional five necrotic. Necrotic having no effect, but this one, its form is fading, having previously been injured. Does that mean it's hurt or it's down? It is on death's door. Okay. I'm going to hit it again. It's 14 to hit. That will still hit. That's more like it. There That's it is. That's 19 yes. slash damage. There's the spice. Gron, you finish off another one of these wraiths. Uh, its form disperses in a cloud of shadow as nine still remain. Califex, following your lead, is going to attack another one of the injured ones with advantage. Your boy Califex crits. That's my boy. He's going to go ahead and spend another Divine Smite for some big... <coughs> Double smite because of the crits. You see another one cut down and eight remain as we go to Andromedy. Yeah, sure. I'll target four that are undamaged with a fourth level command. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I will command them to halt DC 14 well save. All these guys. All four fail. You'll love to see it. Okay. They all take no action on their next turn. Insane. <laughs> uh, absolutely insane. You can see these threads of fate form around them and bind them, bind their hands. Well, I guess whatever spectral parts of them behind exactly. their back and to the floor and whatnot. Yes. Very cool. Up next, Polymede. Just shouting out to the new approaching party led by this badass looking triton. Just to everyone. I think we'll take all the help we can get, yes? As she casts another lightning bolt, you can see another one fades as now seven, as it is now their turn. Four of them can't do anything, so I'm only going to have three of them do something. So, cool. <laughs> one is going to attack you, in fact, Gron. That is a 19 to hit. Uh-huh. God. It's either like crazy high or crazy low with these D8s. That is 14 necrotic damage, and I need you to make another con save. 18. That will pass as this life drain tries to, well, drain your life, but you successfully stave that off. One of the remaining ones is going to attack. You know, let's go after Clix. Clix has been dealing some damage. That is a 21 to hit. Misses. No, it doesn't. Uh, you lie. You take 10 
necrotic damage. Fuck off. And I need you to make a con save. Hey, what about uncanny dodge clicks? You mean five necrotic damage? Because I used uncanny dodge and thought of it on my own. (laughs) 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 That's bull. Oh, oh, man. Uh, oh, my God. Cat's out of the bag. Oh, God. This Jesus. is painful. Uh, give me that con save. Sorry? Con save? 22? I, I swear to fuck. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's pass. Thank you. That's pass. HP not reduced. And the final one is going to go after our new friend, the Triton Aramoana. And that is a dirty 20 to hit. Um, it's does just making sure (laughs) oh man you take 23 necrotic damage and i need you to make a constitution saving throw 18 okay that will pass you can feel this life draining wraith trying to reduce your total health but you are able to resist that effect sweet um i don't kiss boys (laughs) <laughs> Very cool. The bronze bones go next. They're going to continue their assaults. You can see three more cut down as they not only crit on one attack, but also hold real high. These minotaurs, their bronze armor, and these beating war drums. You heard her! Take no prisoners! And they all shout out at their seeming leader's command. Four remain. We're back up to clicks. The one I was attacking before. I'll stay on that one. If it's still alive. 16 hit. That'll hit. 23 damage. Awesome. And why not? Let's do some offhand. 19. Yep, that hits. Four damage. Very cool. Clicks. That is just enough. You cut down another one. Three remain. And this time I'm going to need somebody to roll me two d4. Somebody other than clicks. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'll do it. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not bullshit for once, thank you. Four. Clicks, after your turn, four more spawn. There are now seven total remaining once more. As we go back around to Ermoana. All right. Can you give me the layout of the wraith, like, distance-wise? This is for the sake of what, a a radius spell? Yeah. What are you looking at here? I'm thinking of fairy fire to give everyone advantage. Great. 20-foot spread, I think? Yeah. Yeah, distance of 60, 20 feet spread gives everyone advantage. say it out loud. Scala knows. Excellent. Um, (laughs) uh, (laughs) Go ahead and give me an arcana check. 16. Okay, I'm going to say you can get five out of the seven in this. As I look at the five wraiths within my view, a violet light begins to emit into the ground underneath them and cast them into this light. And I shout, bronze bones, focus on them. Allies that, like, whatever you guys need our help, also focus on them. Just focus. Amazing. <laughs> this is just so this is just awesome. <clears throat> Hell yeah. DC, I think, 15. So they're going to roll that. That's two fails. Jesus Christ. Two ones, a five, and an 11. They all fail. Fantastic. I mean, like, that's great. <laughs> Hell yeah. You see the five of these erupt in this violet fairy fire. I evoke my rage. Did Aramoana enter rage and hurt anybody? <laughs> worth asking. What does your rage look like, actually? Okay, so as she shouts, you guys have made me so angry. These violet plumes of smoke erupt from around her feet and almost wind themselves around her body, almost like a Sailor Moon transformation. Sick. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, I'm absolutely. And in, oh, and in, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. You see, you see why I was laughing. Now? Yes, it's better than and... a Lord of the Rings reference. We'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck right off. And um, all of your garb is kind of faintly billowing, much like a sailor scout. So wait, does not hurt anybody? Yeah, yeah. That's literally just a gron. That's a gron <laughs> feature. All right, all right. Yeah, that's a gron feature. Uh, well, that's a, so real it's a gron original. Clicks, clicks looks to gron and says. At least she doesn't hurt everybody. 
could learn a thing or two. That's one of the most hurtful things you could say. Oh, man. <laughs> so, you know, Gron, you gotta, Gron, you okay. gotta shape up or ship out, Gron. No, I'm just kidding. Gron, Gron it's all right. It's okay. You didn't mean it. <laughs> okay. Califex trying to talk Gron off the edge here. <laughs> End it all. Gron, that's you. What do you call that color? <laughs> Never seen that in Theros. All right. I'm going to... I don't have any other bonus actions. I'm just going to do the same thing again. Awesome. I'm going to position myself so that I can... For your aura. Yeah, go for it. That's 17. Okay. So it's up to you. You can either get all of the ones that just got hit by the fairy fire, which would hurt clicks and califex. Oh, he's going to do that. Or, or you can get the other two and hurt no one. I mean... I mean, come on. Is it cool with you guys if I... <sighs> Don't even ask anymore. Just do your thing. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> you know, it hurts me just as much as it hurts you. You really don't mean that, but it's okay. All right. Clicks and Califex take three damages. Clicks <laughs> arches, up, arches up his back like a, like a Halloween cat prepared and bristled to take three damage. <laughs> awesome. They take three fire damage. Go ahead and make your attacks. Every fucking time. <laughs> 21. Hell yeah. Ah, 12 on the die. That is 20 points of slashing damage. Holy shit. You cut one down in one swing. Ooh, and I get six points back. Ah. Oh. Which I didn't mention last turn. Yes. As you swing through these, your killing blows, as it were, because of your new great axe, having a bit of restoration swing. Very cool. Yeah. There's also five necrotic damage that doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. But it happens. Gonna hit a different one. Go for it. 19 to hit. That'll hit. 14 slashing damage. Gron's just hacking away at these guys. Very cool. Anything else from Gron? Nope. But let me know if one near me uh, attacks someone else. Will do. Califex out of smites, but getting several forms of advantage here. Lands a hit go. Gron, you see just as quickly as you injure this second wraith in your path, Califex finishes it off with a deft swing of his spear and giving you a deferential nod turning towards the five that remain. That is Andromedy. Okay. Andromedy saw this strange merfolk come out of nowhere and is apparently trying to help, but also saw that she took a pretty big hit. So they will send their homunculus mm. over to deliver a cure wounds to you. Like, thanks. Let's do a second level cure wounds that did Burn. look like a fairly big hit. So you will recover uh, only ten hit points. But, as I use my voice of authority on you, you can use your reaction to take an attack against any of these dudes. Ooh, very nice. Yeah, so you basically just immediately get to attack again. So I turn towards the wraith closest to me, and she pulls out her mace. Cool. Which glows an even brighter shade of blood red violet, and that'll be <laughs> a 14 to hit. Uh, that does hit, actually. Ooh, okay, fantastic. She raises her, her mace, which has the glowing tendrils of smoky fabric, around it and smashes it to deal nine damage. Nice. And then it's still my turn, so yep. I'm going to use my bonus action. Back to Andromedy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize I could do this. A bonus action to command my homunculus companion to shoot a little bolt at uh -huh. one of these uh, rates. It, like, forms a little ball of magma in its proboscis and spits it out. Were you trying to say proboscis? <laughs> Isn't it proboscis? Nope. That is not a word, but that's fine. Okay. Uh, see, I'm the one mispronouncing words. That's fine. Yeah. Um, well, Andy, Andy leaped at the opportunity. Yeah, I, I really pointed out. should never. That's a 23 to hit. That'll absolutely hit. Deals. Get ready for this. Three points of force damage. Hell yeah. Hey, it's force damage, so it's, at least it's not reduced. That's handy. And that's my turn. So that was Andromedy. We're back to Polymede, looking down towards this seemingly new ally, this Triton, saying, 
Well, I certainly like your style. You can see she begins casting her hands in a circular pattern as she casts Thunder Wave (laughs) on a con save, which two fail and one succeeds. She is able to push the wraith away from... Aramoana, you see one of the wraiths get pushed away from you with this thunder wave, as well as the one engaged with Gron and Clix get pushed away from them. Yeah, like, I'm gonna take a reaction. Go for it. It's 26. Hits. 13 slashing. Awesome. Likewise, going to take a reaction. Nat 1, does that hit? That does not hit. <laughs> That's bullshit. That's okay. Let me see the stat block, I don't believe you. <laughs> These are all with advantage. Oh, though, shit. Of, okay. Of fairy fire. Fire. Fairy fire. We got the fairy yeah. fire. That's more like it. How does an 18 fare? That'll do. Figured it would. Uh, 16 damage. Awesome. Between Gron and Clicks, you finish off another one. There are three left. That is Polymede's turn. The Hoplites. Hoplites finish off another, leaving two. The Bronze Bones finish off the last two. The swirling clouds around seem to be still as we go to clicks. We're still in initiative. What do you do? There are none left? At this moment, no. I don't like that we're still in initiative. I guess clicks is going to go up to Gron and just say, You okay? We're better. Are you okay? A little burned. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Where are we going with that? Clicks passes his turn. He's just being a shit. Somebody roll me one d4. I'd like to redeem myself. I'll, oh, okay. I was gonna say it's my turn unless our guest wants to go. Oh, no, okay. he already rolled the dice. The die have been uh, cast, I'll... dude. Go for it. You already, you already totally pooched us. It was a one. It was a one. Very, very cool. Does one shitty little wraith come up late to the party? One wraith forms. <laughs> Perfect. And this time it is the shadow of Hargant. Looking over this scene, Gron, you immediately recognize him. As it prepares to attack. But we are back to Aramoana. You see one large shade, one large wraith reform. Okay, so I'm gonna boop him. She gonna boop him. We always stand a good boop. Yeah. So as this wraith forms in front of me, I shout, Bronze Bones, allies. Apparently he wants some more. So we need to focus all of our fire on him. Um, I'm going to need you all to like focus and just get this done. I have a nail appointment. Do Tritons have nails? <laughs> Yes, they do. They have claws. They claws, do. I think. Claw, I have a claw sure. appointment. I have a yeah. claw appointment. Yeah. That's a, a crit, though, sir. Hell yeah. Yes, I particularly like this D20 because it says yeet instead of a 20. Oh, amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah. And amazing. then it says, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. It says, uh. Does it say oof on the one? It says fuck on the one. Very Hold nice. On. <laughs> let me, let me yeah, do yeet. some. Yeah. Here's a, there it here's is. a fuck. Yeah, there it is. And there's a... You love to roll a yeet. You love to see it. Yeah, you love to see it. And where did you get that? Maybe we can get some sponsorship. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, just say the brand like five times slowly. That would be good. (laughs) Cast summon sponsor. Did you start doing commercial breaks? Never. (laughs) (laughs) So that is an 11 damage. Because your weapon is magical, an 11 is going to do it. Aramoana, as you have jumped to the aid of these Acroans, you get the privilege of painting the final picture of this scene. How do you slay this final foe? As the mace glows with this violet, blood-red light, as it slashes through the wraith and cuts away the darkness, you hear a screech out across the sky so loudly that everyone feels the need to cover their ears, or shall they bleed? Amazing. (laughs) So good. (laughs) Love it. Very cool. And with that, 
We Exit Initiative. Wow. Well, any enemy of Hargot is a friend of mine. That was an impressive rage. What's your name? Yours is pretty cool, too, I guess. But thank you. Whatever. Mm, my name is Era Moana. My parents thought that I would be born to deliver our people, the cursed tribe of the Great Sea. But fuck that. I have more important things to do. Like what? Like do my nails, slay minotaurs, do some shit for Mogus. I don't know. Why are you asking so many questions? You're not going to slay this minotaur. Click steps in front of Gron defensively. Amazing. <laughs> I pat clicks on the head. <laughs> Aramwana, you see a uh, human roguish but also armored looking individual approach kind of bow curtly and say please excuse my friends i am califex and this is my companion gron and this my friend clicks and i'm andromedy and i have a very important question for you Mm. where does one get their nails done in a place as desolate as this (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Polymed, a tall a female human oracle, approaches and says, Ah, yes, that is a most excellent question. Yeah, I have this guy that I see back in Scophos. He does a really great job. At the mention of Scophos, yep. Gron perks Yep, up. Gron, go ahead and make a history check. Five. <laughs> <laughs> Eh, but I'm about to give you advantage because Polymed immediately says, Scophos, the the Labyrinthian polis, is that where you're from? Well, it's not where I'm from, but it's where I am now. My tribe was cursed, and we can never find the ocean or whatever. So we went the wrong direction, and we ended up in Scophos, and I basically took that shit over. So... I'm not, like, you know, in charge, but, like, I don't know, I lead a whole bunch of minotaurs. Yes, I can see that. That is certainly impressive. You you conquered Scophos. At the mention of this, Gron, and the rest of the party, you all see, coming out of these bronze bone minotaurs, an enormous figure. Probably the single biggest minotaur you have seen yet. And amid his full plate, you see what almost looks like kind of a large backpack or honestly something that looks more like a crude baby Bjorn. And it carries a very regal looking yet elderly female minotaur. She almost interrupts Aramoana and says, Come now, you know there are many more back in Skofos who would certainly beat the hell out of you. Mind your manners. Excuse her. I am Olakia. Some call me the Torn Oracle. But, indeed, with the help of this brave warrior, she points to the Triton before you, we were able to rally these bronze bones and drive out a menace of a warband from our home in Skophos. I shortly thereafter received an omen. You... She points to Polymede. I saw you cry out for help, and the voice of Mogus spoke in my ear and told me to answer. And thus, here we are. A frail old lady and a fish that can't even find water. Some crew. Uh, Clicks, go ahead and give me a dexterity saving throw. Oh, shit. What's she going to do to me? (laughs) (laughs) Not all oracles are as polite as I am, Clicks. Yeah, I mean, you just let me, like, wail into you verbally. I'm just used to that. Shit. <laughs> All right. Twelve. Hell yeah. Oh, Clicks. No. You see, in a flash, a quarterstaff beat you over the head. You take, you take five bludgeoning damage. Uncanny dodge. <laughs> Fuck off. You take two bludgeoning damage. Oh, oh shit. That'd as, be cool. As Olakia, in a flash, draws this quarterstaff and assaults you, saying, You are quite rude! Rubbing his head, Clicks just hides behind Gron. <laughs> Probably deserve that one. I almost want to activate my rage and just burn him. <laughs> Andromedy, go ahead and give me a history check. Sure. I rolled a two. Sorry. <laughs> not an historical crew. I've got a plus seven, but... I'm guessing a nine still doesn't do it. I'm going to say Polymede kind of scratches her head and says, Alakia the Torn, 
I like hear the tone of Scofo. Swear have I heard that name before. Uh, go ahead and roll that with advantage. Okay. I doubled my roll on the die. Oh <laughs> my god, you guys. There's exposition that needs to happen here. Do I get advantage? Yeah, you said you were going to give Jimmy advantage and you didn't. Yeah, Gron can go ahead and roll advantage as well. All right. Well, see, that's better. That's a 16. Making the wizard feel dumb. Gron's going to go ahead and make this wizard feel dumb because Gron would recall quite a few stories of, from Gron's perspective, they were thought of simply as a war band that roamed the territories to the far north of Phoboros. But in actuality, the Bronze Bones are a militia force of the mythical labyrinthian polis of Skophos. On that role, you aren't necessarily familiar with the name Olakia, but she seems to be an oracle. Now, as you get a better view of her, you see that she does have this very fine red vestments and jewelry, but very strikingly, they are accented by a bright sky blue and white sash across her waist that is adorned with fine beads and bangles. Well, if you're all done gawking, we should get a move on. There might be more of them. You'll hear no opposition from me. Fine. And so, having gained, seemingly, these new allies from Skophos, you continue through Deathbellow Canyon. I'm going to say Andromedy. Go ahead and roll me a perception check with advantage. There's the good rolls. 23 uh, on a natural 20. You can tell that as long as there is some source of powerful light, you would be fairly well protected. Polymede has access to daylight as well, but again, she's burning spell slots and sorcery points to do that. It is also getting quite late. So knowing that, I'm going to say... It's up to all of you. You now have a large force of not only your own Akroan hoplites, but these bronze bones. If you want to continue, or if you want to try and make some space to set up a fortified position to rest. Uh, I think Clix is banged up pretty good, right? Necrotic damage. How long is that HP max HP reduction active for? Until you long rest. Usually. Oh, well, Clix is fixing to do some naps. Big stretchies and bedtime for Clix, if we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> this whole time, Aramoana has been soaking because Granny <laughs> totally outed her and she was trying to be cool and popular. If we think there's a place we can recuperate safely, I think that would be the wise decision. Three oracles among this party, as well as everyone else with their various survival skills. I'm going to say... We're going to do a group survival check with advantage Sick. to see how well you are able to find a fortifiable position. Okie doke. Sick. 23. 16. It's going to be a 15 over here. 19. We survived the shit out of this night. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm going to roll for Califax. As we walk. Aramoana, what can you tell me about this curse upon your people? A long time ago, some elder, I don't know, pissed off Thassa. She was so angry that she dried up our sea, and she cursed us to never find the ocean again. I see. But your people believe that you will be the one to help them find it again? My parents named me Aramoana, the pathfinder to the ocean, in hopes that I would be the one. I do not mean to impose too much upon you, but it is my understanding that those who run from their destinies are eventually brought to them in a manner more unpleasant than they would have had they simply carried out the plan fate had in store for them. Aramoana is picking at her nails and just looking at the ground. Okay, whatever. Alakia speaks up to that Andromedy and says, Ah, so you must be... The voice of Clothis. Indeed I am. I have seen visions of you as well. It seems your god tried very, very hard to unite the 
ever feuding, Mogus and Erois, against a common enemy. I suppose I can thank you and her for our journey here today. There's no need for thanks. I was simply doing what I was meant to do. And as I understand it, we are all doing what we are meant to do. I give a respectful nod and keep going on my way. So on this survival roll, rolled very well, as you travel through this canyon, you find a large swath of rock face cut out, providing something of a large, a shallow cave to position a camp for this large group this evening. You make camp in this position. The hoplites and the bronze bones begin taking watches. You see large fortifications of shield walls and spears at angles on all sides defending this position, as well as uh, modest tents being pitched from both sides. Andromedy and Gron. Go ahead and give me perception checks. 21. Uh, 22. Mm. You guys don't have to show each other. Those are fucking great rolls. And on both of them, you can't help but notice this odd scene of Eroans and Scofies side by side, looking so different, yet looking so similar. These humans and these minotaurs forming their various small encampments separated from each other and very tentative and amicable arrangement. But you can't help but feel the sort of coming together in this moment. Gran particularly, I would say, for your entire life, you have only known minotaurs to seek simply to kill humans, let alone take whatever they have or even, in some warband's cases, eat them. And so I think on this, you are just completely taken aback. Strange sight, isn't it? I would say so. It's hard to believe that there are more minotaurs beyond the wastelands of Phoboros who don't live such savage lives to think a whole polis of them. Strange, don't you think, that Mogus would condone such an existence? That of living in a polis? Sure. Aramwana, you can hear this conversation, uh, but uh, Alakia speaks up to the two of you. Indeed. It is perplexing, isn't it? As she looks across. As now, she's not being carried by another Minotaur anymore, but she is levitating and just sitting kind of cross-legged in the air as she kind of holds her quarterstaff. You may think it confounding, but for my entire life, I have heard not only the voice of Mogus, but that of Athara, god of the polis, for such an admittance of such a grand labyrinthian place to exist, is to admit that Athara and the rest of the pantheon of what you would consider a civilized god would exist in our home. Sure, those who worship Karametra in Skophos sacrifice living blood in her name, that our harvest may be fruitful. And sure, those who worship Erebus and Perforos pay sacrifice, not only in coin and in art, but in blood as well, towards those gods. And what of those who worship Erois? Ah, yes, the so-called god of victory. Well, Erois too has his place in Skophos, seen as the ultimate rival among our people. The one who always is to challenge us to rise in opposition to Mogus for the betterment of our arms and victories. I see. We accept the eternal battle between those two gods, but it is cheap, ill-thought stuff of the rabble of the wastelands that call themselves warbands to think that the god of slaughter be so crude. The god of slaughter? Crude? Well, yes, he is a little crude, isn't he? But we love him for it. You can see a few gold teeth in her mouth as she smiles, saying these words. As Granny Oracle says this, Aramoana is walking over slowly and lays her head into her lap. All premise of her being this badass warrior, outed teenager, and lets everyone know that She just needs some comforting from time to time and asks for some scratches on her gills. (laughs) Oh, 
stop skulking. She sees you do this. You will be a hero yet, Haramoana. You did very well today. Clix leans in to Andromeda and just whispers, I have a really bad feeling about this old lady. Why is that? Just that, that cackle. I don't know. I don't like it. <laughs> ah, you are still a Leonin down to your bones. Any emissary of the gods makes you a little uneasy, don't we? For my whole life, I have lived in fear of Mogus. But if what you're saying is true, could there be a place for me in Skofos? Me, a friend of men? Well, I wouldn't go around to everyone you see saying that, but any minotaurs welcome openly amongst the walls of the labyrinth. How do non-minotaurs find their way around? It's a giant maze, right? Looking towards Aramoana. <laughs> <laughs> that it is. I don't have any problem. I just swim in the sand. Very impressive. She is too humble. Her people come from the cursed sand sea, after all. They have adapted over generations. Instead of swimming in the ocean and controlling it, forsaken by that sea witch, Thassa, they have come to learn to control the sands just as well. That is truly fascinating. Andromeda takes out, like, a spare scroll and just starts taking some notes about this strange cursed sand sea that they've never heard of. Hell yeah. (laughs) Andromeda, go ahead and roll religion for me. A 17. Okay. This tale is definitely confounding to Andromeda, but I would say that you would probably best chalk it up to one of these legends in the kind of historical sense where so much of the history and the deeds of Theron lore happen at the edges of the known world. Even the map that you carry now is mapped even as far as Skophos itself, which is on the far northwestern edge border of the map itself. On a 17, it's still your understanding as a learned person, religion and history, that you know that there is so much more beyond the edges of the map of the known world of Theros. Yeah, I'm riveted by this story. Cool. The conversations with the Yor new allies fade into the night and you all eventually find a long rest the next day comes and so all of the company present begin to move out further down the ravine andromedy go ahead and give me a perception check with advantage as you try and find the party's bearings 13 okay You are still tracking this clinging black fog. But again, if you want to leave the alcove that you have found and continue, you would need to up some daylight. Yeah, I can do daylight for the first hour we're moving. Awesome. With Andromedy having found their bearings, we shoot over to Gron, who will give us a survival check with advantage. Do I have any guidance? Sorry, take a d4. 24. Hell yeah. The help of Andromedy, the Drift Globe casting daylight, and your entire company around you. You forge your way through this very steep ravine. You find various other smaller forks and pathways, even some small caves, which themselves lead into total darkness. All the while, you are able to steer everyone away from any seeming danger or threat until in the distance Andromedy, and then clicks, and then Polymede, and then everyone else can see this enormous cave wreathed in shadows, itself looking like a giant open maw. Polymede looking to you, Andromedy. I think we've found the place. Do you indeed? Sure. You can sense the daylight beginning to fade. Polymed looks to Andromeda. Whatever's about to happen, I can take over if that's about to fade. And she casts daylight, though even through this daylight spell, you can see these curling tendrils of shadow reach in and pierce through. Alakia says, Something tells me your sorceress tricks aren't going to be enough this time as an enormous form begins to take shape in front of all of you. Coming out the Kragma, first you see one massive reptilian head, then beside it a second, 
and then a third, and then two more, and then finally the body of this enormous, shadow-wreathed hydra itself, gargantuan, blocking your path. Everyone, let's go ahead and roll initiative. Yeah, all right. 20. Dag. 16. A gentle's 14 over here. 12. <laughs> okay. This enormous shadow hydra charges towards your company. <laughs> Gron, you are up first. I'm going to momentarily look back at Alakia and Andromedy and the others. Should I hit it? Should you? You know what to do. <laughs> I mean, like, don't kiss it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes the... Anyway. Gron turns back around and charges directly at it. Hell yeah. As I arrive, I'm going to activate my rage. It's nice. going to take big three fire damage. Doesn't seem to care much about that, <laughs> but... All right. I'm going to attack one of its many necks. 16 to hit. That just misses. What? Thing's a fucking giant. Natural armor is a thing, Jeppy. Sorry. Oh, 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 oh. No, wait. It's a plus one great axe. Wait, that's a 17 to hit. That just hits. So wait, what's its DC? 17. (laughs) We discovered its armor class. We used identify. (laughs) First round. Beautiful. You get that one for free. And that's 14 slashing damage. And an additional 6 necrotic. You slash through this hydra. The entirety of its form is seemingly made out of shadows. But nonetheless, you are able to cleave through with your great axe. The necrotic damage, seeming not to do really very much at all, the rest of the hit connects fully. Recklessly attacking the same neck. That's a 27 to hit. Absolutely hits. And that is 20 slashing damage. Wow, okay. Jesus, no way. Did I hurt one of his heads? The rest of you see Gron, say something quippy, turn around, charge towards this Hydra made of shadows, and hack and slash before one of its shadowy heads flies off. That is Gron's turn. All right. We'll just keep doing this, then. (laughs) (laughs) Califex, up next. Uh, So he's going to charge in behind Gron, make his attack. A one and a three on the dice. That's it. Swings in with a spear, misses. Oh, you look so much cooler when you did that. And then braces himself near you, Gron, as we go to the Shadow Hydra. <laughs> and is going to attack several times. Has four remaining heads, gets four attacks. Cool. Gron and Califex are each going to take two of these. So here's Gron's two. It adds... Jesus Christ. It adds 10 to these, and it rolled two threes. So, <laughs> Gron is fine. Califex, however. Okay. Califex take both of these. Oh, Jesus. Perhaps I should jump in front of one of these. <laughs> it's up to you. On the first attack, you see Califex takes 17 piercing damage. On the second takes another 16 piercing damage. He also has to make a wisdom saving throw, which he fails, and he is now... Oh, he has advantage on that since he's near me. Never mind. Nice. But you can see this unnatural fear start to creep up in Califex, but he is able to shake it off, looking to you with a deferential nod. Okay, cool. I'm just going to attack ahead. Here it goes. Ooh. 19 on the die. Cool, cool. 23, it'll hit. 21 is flashing damage. That's the first one? That is that now uh, offhand. Great. 21 hits. Oh, yeah. Four additional four damage. Nice. Again, the ordinary short sword seeming to cut through with not as much force, but the magic dagger doing the business. We go to Andromedy. Okay, Andromedy is going to have this new familiar who I've decided to name Searly. <laughs> Scully and Searly, that's amazing. Cute name. 
try to deliver a touch to this creature. You know a 21 will hit? Yes, it will. All right. Could the Hydra make me a wisdom save against being cursed? Oh. Oh, against being cursed. Okay. Okay. We'll try. That is a nat 20. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Oh. I think you meant four. Uh, yeah. Yes! There you go. <laughs> yes! Oh, yes. Andromedy invoking first portent of the day. Uh, the Hydra is cursed. I am going to curse it with lethargy. Sleepy boy. What the fuck is that? On its turn, it needs to make a will save. If it fails, it takes no action because it's too lazy. <laughs> I love it. Spud Life Hydra. What love it. Fuck. Listen, all things should live this fun life. Andromeda is at the end of your turn. No, I'm going to use a bonus action to shoot a little molten bolt of bug juice at it. Great. That will hit with a 23. Yep. Get ready for this. Four points of force damage. Did you say fart damage? Yeah, fart damage. <laughs> the bug farts on it. <laughs> at the end of your turn, it's going to use a legendary action. And I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. Me? As its gaze of doom stares directly towards you. Oh man, that's not good. I don't want to be doomed. I'm not going to be doomed with a 21. No way. Wow, that will pass. Nothing happens. You see the black eyes, these empty abyssal voids stare into your soul and you can tell that there would be this horrible paralyzing fear if it weren't for the fact that you just saved and so you're fine you're andromedy the voice of clothes you're fine <laughs> i can't fucking touch you and i hate it it's almost like you build really cool <laughs> encounters and then scala just says no that's its legendary action we go to polymede Polymede looks at this thing and it's going to shoot it with lightning because that's what she does. Uh, there's a lightning bolt doing some damage, but it is resistant as she looks towards the hoplites. I'm going to need everyone to go ahead and give me a perception check. Three. I'm just amazed at the Hydra. Fourteen. It's a one on the die. Seventeen. Cool. Andromeda, you get the sense of this a little bit, but Armoana, you do especially, and that is that the presence of this monster may empower the other wraiths that may apparate and fight at its side. And so Polymede, also catching this, lightning in her eyes, points to the hoplites. Prepare to engage those wraiths if they break through the daylight. That is Aramoana. As she realizes this information, Aramoana informs her bronze bones. Attack the slimy monster. Ew, it's so gross. Kill it before it allows its heathens to touch me. Amazing. Oh. Amazing. <laughs> so Aramoana rages. She says, I can't stand this thing. It's so gross. God, it makes me so angry. And she just... <laughs> Go ahead. In response to that, in your ear, you hear the voice of your god. <sighs> yes, crush it. It is gross. <laughs> <laughs> I really always thought Mogus's vocabulary would include gross. Yeah. Fantastic. That's a yeet on that die. Oh, Hell yes. yeah. Another <laughs> yeet. You love to see it. Which I feel is absolutely perfect having Mogus just softly whisper in my ear. Hell yeah. As it sends tingles down my spine, I boop it for 11 damage. You swing in, and at your command, the bronze bones are going to go ahead and make their attacks. Only one of them hitting against this Shadow Hydra, but the magic weapon damage from their assault cutting through. Are we down to three heads? Two heads? You see, with their attack, a second head falls. You guys, I'm going to need you to step up your game. As it does, it's going to use a second of its legendary actions. Aramoana, I am going to need you to make a wisdom saving throw. 18. Unfortunately, oh, an 18 just fails. And so... 
you take 16, halved to 8, because your barbarian totem resists even this fell necrotic damage. But you are also frightened in such a way that you are paralyzed, at least until the end of your next round. And so, back at the top, we are back to Grom. Grom's gonna hack and slash recklessly. Hell yeah. I'm gonna hit the hurt neck. It's a 28 to hit. That will absolutely hit. And that's 18 slashing damage and a useless 5 necrotic damage. Gron, on your first swing, everyone in the area, that's Gron, Califex Clicks, Aramoana, all of the bronze bones, take 9 acid damage. Halved for Aramoana. Now Gron can take a second swing. I have a bonus action. You guys want another 3 fire damage on you? Well, it's one more for old time's sake. <laughs> But you don't you don't anticipate this is gonna continue happening. Maybe I'll use Wrathful Smite. Here you go. Yeah, that's probably gonna miss anyway. That's only a fifteen to hit. Fifteen misses. Boom. That is Gron. Up next is Califex. <laughs> With advantage hitting. And he's going to do some damage there. You can see this third head is struggling to hold its form. After Califex's turn, Hydra's gonna use another legendary action. I need everyone within a 15-foot radius, same people that took the acid damage just now, to give me constitution saving throws. 20. 20, 24 total. Dang. Holy shit. Califex also got a nat 20. What the fuck? Crew runs deep. Insane. Just insane. So, uh, you know, I'm really, really carrying the weight here with a 7. Cool. That ain't gonna God. bode well. That ain't gonna work. <laughs> not. Spending two of its legendary actions, it invokes its dreadful aura, and a wash of shadow echoes across the vicinity, and so everyone who saved against a DC-19 con save takes only six points of necrotic damage, and everybody else takes twelve I also just take six. You also just take six. Those who also failed are knocked prone by this wash, eerily similar to the flay wind which you pass through on your way here. That was the legendary action after Califex, and so now it's its turn. It is going to make some attacks. It is Um, going to make a will save. It's going to make a will save. That's right. Let's do that first. This with advantage. It does roll a 19. Okay. Good for it. So here's some attacks. It's got three heads left. It's going to make the first one against Gron, because Gron's hitting pretty big. That is a 16 plus 10. Yeah. (laughs) Can you tell how excited I am? (laughs) That is a big 19 piercing damage halved to nine. It is going to make an attack against Clix. Uh, Clix is up in the mix. Shit. My smite dropped. That is a 19 total against Clix. Yeesh. For... Don't fuck with me. A 12 piercing damage. And the third one is going to be against Aramuan. Because you are prone, it does make this with advantage. And that is a 17 plus 10. This is what kind of damage? Piercing damage. This is going to be 14 halved to 7. I'm going to use my reaction to attack it. Go for it. That's a 21 to hit. That absolutely hits. And that's 16 slashing damage. Very cool. With 16 slashing damage, you sever a third head. Nice. That is the end of its turn. At the end of its turn, you see... You see two more heads form out of the shadows. As we turn to clicks. All right, doing the doing the boop stuff. The eighteen hits. Twenty damage. Everybody in melee takes eight acid damage, halved for Aramona. I'm never gonna leave rage at this point. And then I will offhand nice misses 
just a big old whiff. Cool. It's going to use its third legendary action to use its gaze of doom again. You see these horrible black eyes stare down at you. Clicks. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Ten. That will fail. Oh, shit. Okay, Clicks. Don't fucking start. <laughs> <laughs> Not the reaction I wanted to hear out of your mouth at all. Clicks, you Whenever takes, the DM does that. You yeah. take 17 necrotic damage. I don't think you mean 17. I think you mean 8. Yeah, you can absolutely uncanny dodge that. You take eight, but you are still overcome with this paralyzing fear. Sick. Pretty cool. And if Click's turn, that is Andromeda's turn. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave in a fucking body bag at this point. Jesus, Clix is looking pretty hurt. <laughs> are you going to allow her, like, non-jaw-moving speech? It can be, like, strained. <laughs> you got eyes! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I didn't know if you could pull off restrained Valley Girl, but I think That's you nailed insane. it. That's insane. I need some fucking help. Like, I just really need help. I'm gonna have to do this because we can't have everybody being unable to act. I'm gonna drop concentration on the curse. I'm okay. going to cast Heroism at third level, because you said okay. this Gaze of Doom is a fear effect? Oh, yes, it is. Okay, cool. Ooh. It is a Tar- fear that creates paralysis. Right. So I'm going to make everyone immune to fear. Holy shit. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. Just these several fucking ways that you absolutely fuck me. Yeah. God. Ron, Aramoana, and Clix are all... Heroic now, immune to fear, you regain four temporary hit points at the start of each turn. And then as a bonus action, I'm gonna shoot it with like a little force dart. Sure. A couple more damage. What's a couple Aren't more Aren't you damage? so glad that you've got this construct to just ping people? Yeah, it's so neat. I, I, I love it. Thank you for giving this to me. You're very uh, people. Oh my god, he crit! Crit for a total of what? Two damage. Okay, they crit. They, they crit. crit. Well, well is it, the familiar is non gendered as well? I, I would say it's a construct, yeah. It's a construct. It's a construct. Okay. Okay. So, d- definitively, yeah, for sure, yeah. Scully is a she, but. Okay. Surly is a. Is a they. So, coming in for a big seven force damage here. There it is. That's seven force damage that it's not resistant to. So, there you go. Anyway, that's my turn. Awesome. That's your turn. It used all its legendary actions. So, we go right Epic. to Polymede and the Hoplites. Is that like a band? I mean, the Hoplites might as, might as well be. She's just going to stick to what she knows. She's going to shoot it with lightning. Just roll all these dice. <laughs> You can see that one of these heads looks nearly destroyed, singed, as the lightning bolt strikes it. Also on this initiative, you see after the Hydra heads have begun to reform, indeed, these raids begin breaking through the daylight at the periphery, and the hoplites are going to engage with them. That might evolve into a lair action, but for now, we go... Back to Aramoana. You are no longer paralyzed because you are no longer afraid. And so yes. you are still prone on the ground. You immediately Correct. gain four health, and then you can take your turn. I immediately swim into the sand. Hell yeah. Towards the Hydra. Nice. And while in the sand, I'll use Wild Shape, and I will turn into a giant crocodile, which will suddenly jump out of the sand. Are you kidding me? Fuck <laughs> Fantastic. That is awesome. And bite. Hell yeah, and you're fucking raging. <laughs> raging alligator. Correct. So 14 plus 5 to hit. That will hit. Okay, so it's 2d10s. 8 plus rage is 2. Plus 2 on the bite. 12. That's piercing damage. Um, I need you to do a DC save. Okay. 16 is the number you want to beat. What type of save is this? Escape DC 16 is what it says. It sounds like it would be a strength save. It beats it. It has a huge ass strength modifier. Let's see if tail hits. Oh, fuck. It's a crit. Holy shit. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeet. Yeet. Holy shit. So seven and eight on the, for the double the damage on the yeet. That's 15 plus two is 17 plus two for the rage. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, 19? And then, as the crocodile's turning down, she smacks the hydra's head with her tail and dives back into the sand. Uh, just insane. So you hide among the sand as if you were swimming in water. Insane. You occasionally see croc spikes. Just absolutely wild. Was that a crocodile? (laughs) Yeah, it looked like a crocodile. It's swimming around (laughs) in the sand. What the hell is a crocodile doing here? After its assault, one of the heads is destroyed. Well, that was her. Bronze bones are going to keep attacking. They deal some damage, but they deal some slashing damage. And so, everybody in the mix, minus Era Moana, takes seven more acid damage. Califex, looking hurt. As we're back at the top, we're all the way back to Gron. Feels like it's been years. Yeah. Gron's still here. All right. (laughs) I'm going to put my smite up before I attack the first time this time. That's a crit. Hell yes. yeah. Hell like yeah. Like Very a- nice. Be nice. There we go. They rolled a 10 and an 11. <laughs> oh, baby. There they are. You also double your necrotic damage and your smite damage. Wow. All right, so that's... What's two times zero? Well, yeah, yeah. but still. Right. Dice. 29 slashing damage. Okay. And then seven useless necrotic damage. And three psychic damage, and it needs to make a wisdom saving throw against 15. It does roll an 18 on that. But you can see, with that insane attack, you sever another head immediately, and the entire form of this Hydra is beginning to look quite bloody. <laughs> nice. That was only my first attack. Yeah, Jesus, man. Grom's <laughs> bringing it back around. Oh, my God. For a second hit. 18. 18 hits. 18 hits. All right. 11 more slashing damage. Great. At the end of your turn, it's going to use its Gaze of Doom on you. You're immune to the Frighten, but I still need you to go ahead and make that save for the damage. What is it? A Wisdom saving throw. That's a 14. That'll still fail as you take 18 necrotic damage. Oof. Uncanny dodge. <laughs> it is Califex. He's going to... Fucking heal me. Yeah, that's what he's actually going to do. Oh, shit, cool. Okay. <laughs> he's going to heal and then get out because he is also extremely hurt. He looks down to Clix, extends his hand for some lay on hands, um, and Clix, you immediately regain 15 health, and then he is going to use his bonus action to disengage, and then he is backing up. He backs up towards Andromedy, getting out of the fray best he can. And then we go to the Hydra. Looking quite hurt, is going to unleash an all-out assault. It's got three heads, so it makes three attacks. Here they go. First attack is a 21 against Gron. Gron, that is another 15 piercing damage, halved to 7. It's going to make its second attack against you. That might actually miss. 13. That misses. And then last attack against Clicks. That is a 19 plus 10. <laughs> Barely hits. Do you take <laughs> okay. uh, a brutal... Wait, I'm going to jump in front of it. <laughs> you sure? I don't know. Clicks, how are you doing? I'm better. They're... I mean, he just used the fucking word brutal, so I don't know how much better I'm going to be. But I'm not going to say the number until Gron makes up his mind. That's not the way it works. I know. I still have That's why I said it there. Oh, God. Um, Not. Oh, he just healed you for fucking 15. You take the. No, take it. It's yours. It's all yours. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you. You take your damage. I I was was going to remind you. (laughs) Also, Gron can just fucking attack as a reaction. That is useful. Jesus. You take. 22. <laughs> okay. Um, it is definitely going to be uncannily dodged because I have 23 health left. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Clicks uncanny dodges as this enormous fucking mouth made of shadows just snaps down on you. You jump out of the way, taking half damage. Ron's going to react. Jesus. It's a 19 to hit. 19 hits. 13 slashing damage. With that, another head falls, 
after Grand Slash, everyone in melee takes an additional six acid. Even bloodied, now truly approaching death's door, four more heads appear as we go to clicks. clicks. <laughs> yes, thank you. As we go to clicks, I didn't want to have to. <laughs> you gained four temporary hit points. I clicks didn't... gains oh, four temporary. Thank you. Points. I gained four temporary hit points. Every little bit counts. I'm not even gonna mark them as temporary because these fuckers are going away immediately. I already know it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and attack it. That's a nat 20. Oh, baby. Here we okay. go. Okay. Go some ahead. Spice. Yeah, there we Thank go. God. 44 piercing damage. Fuck what? off. No way. What? S- sneak attack. Sneak attack. Oh, Double. Yeah, it's... yeah. Insane. Clicks. Even halved as you lay into this thing. On this crit. Paint a fucking picture. All right, I'll paint a picture. I'm pretty hurt, but I'm, you know, pretty upset about it. So I just run right up this thing's neck and leap up and drive both of my blades into its eyeballs and just bring its head down to the ground and end its life. And it bursts in an eruption of smoke, which quickly vanishes. Sweet. Then I use my bonus action to disengage and bop right the fuck out of that situation. <laughs> Because I've done my part, and i got to get the fuck out of there. Very cool. As you see, there are still three raids engaged, each with the Minotaurs and the Acroans. As we go to Andromedy. Okay, Andromedy will try and do their part to dispatch some of these raids. Try and hit one with a shocking grasp. Oh yes, that'll do a 26. Absolutely hits. So it takes... Nine lightning and four force damage. And then we'll do a little mothball at it. (laughs) Nice. 21 to hit. Very cool. For uh, an additional six force damage. Excellent. You bloody one of the wraiths. Aramoana, it is your turn. The Hydra was just dispatched. You see your company still battling these wraiths. The Croc's eyes are just peering out of the sand. As I see the Hydra fall, Aramoana swims and dives down into the sand towards the remaining wraiths and chooses to engage. 16 to hit. Uh, 16 will hit. 19 on the bite. You, indeed, on this bite, dispatch one of these wraiths. Fantastic. I still have tail. Can I engage the other? Yes, you can. 17 plus 4 to hit. Hits. Um, and then it says 1d8. 11. Bludgeoning. Very cool. The rest of you see this giant crocodile burst out of the sand, as if bursting from the sea, and in its giant maw, destroy another of these raids and attack with its tail a, another polymede in the hoplites. I'm gonna go ahead and attack the others remaining. Destroy another and with the bronze bones are able to finish the last remaining. We exit initiative, and for a moment, all is silent. The gaping, almost itself, screaming entrance to the Kragma in front of you all. Aramoana slowly steps out of the sand as if she's climbing stairs in her triton form. Where have you been? Getting my nails done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> crazy fight. There was a crocodile. Wow. Oh, Gron, come on now. We we both saw her turn into that. That was amazing. I told you I have no problem swimming through sand. Uh, Polymede speaks up. Indeed, you are quite the skilled fighter, both on two legs and on four. I really must get the name of whoever does your nails. Through the bronze bones, you see the familiar form of Olakia levitate towards all of you, and pointing towards the Kragma, she says, Now then, we have played our part, and we, we will defend this place from anything else that may get out. But you, pointing to Gron and to Clix and to Andromedy, your purpose continues there. Well, thanks, I guess. I guess I was wrong about you after all. She goes like she's going to hit you and then stops. She holds herself. <laughs> what about the hoplites? What about Califex? You see Polymede says, 
I agree with Olakia, and I will stay here with the hoplites. And God, if anything else, should try and lurk its way out of the canyon. Califex saying, Gran, I'm not leaving your side. So, you'll come with us, then? He looks to the party. Unless you commanded me to stay here, I will not leave you. I think he's one of us. Gran, I'm going to give you a insight check. With advantage, because you know him more than anyone else on this world. Seven. <laughs> With advantage of seven? Yeah, a five and a six, and I only add one. Okay. All oh. right. Um, yeah. Don't even know me anymore, man. Yeah. <laughs> you think he is speaking from a place of total honesty. Andromedy passively, you can tell that Califex is trembling and extremely hurt. Andromedy will say, we all took some wounds in that encounter. Perhaps it would be wise for us to take a moment to gather our strength and perhaps think carefully about how we want to proceed. Olakia turns to the bronze bones and says, You heard them! Set up a formation! We're taking a rest! I would like to say that before you guys begin the short rest, Aramawana walks up to Andromedy and touches her forehead to theirs, closes her eyes, and then returns to her duties, setting up camp. Hell yeah. Very cool. Very fucking cool. You begin your short rest with the gaping Kragma before you. As the company around you begins setting up watches, you can all hear a booming din like a stampede from across the canyon. Just as quickly, you see clouds like a storm approaching, larger than any force you've faced yet on your trek through this land. Then you hear the war cries and screams of this approaching force. But before another moment passes, however, you see a figure on a high ridge on a nearby Kenyan wall as a single horn calls. An army of Akroan hoplites comes into view on the horizon beside her as she shouts out, Arissa may be afraid of the coming storm, but we don't follow cowards, for our fight is not yet done. And if Aesirius were able, he would surely say the same. Akroans, to battle! Verenes leads their charge down the canyon side as Alakia looks to Aramoana and then to the four of you and says, painting blood across her face, Like it or not, now is your chance. Escape! Escape into the Kragma! And leave these rage gore to us! <laughs> and that's where we'll end our game. May, thank you for joining us. Do you have any handles you would like to plug? I go by nurse underscore sushi on most of my social media platforms. Uh, my private career, I work in healthcare, so I encourage everybody and anybody who is able to go and get vaccinated. I encourage everyone to do their own research, protect yourself, protect your family, and protect the community members around you. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Deep agree. Absolutely. Yeah. We stand the vaccine. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.